Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is add movement input? The add movement input node is a node that basically goes hand in hand with a pawn, a controller, and character movement. And it's what determines how much movement and in what direction that pawn or character moves. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind. We're going to cover the node and we're going to cover those things right now. So let's get started. This is our add movement input node. It targets a pawn, so our input is going to have to be some sort of a pawn reference because we need to move a pawn. It takes in a direction. This direction is a vector 3, so you're going to have your x, your y, and a z. It takes in a scale value. It multiplies against the world direction evenly in every direction, and that determines how much it moves. And then we have force, which I'll cover here shortly. Now the world direction and the scale value are basically what we use to determine what we move. In this example, for our default character, it determines what our current rotation is. So which du direction are we currently rotating? It breaks it apart so we don't use the Z because this is just forward, backwards, left and right movement. Figures out which way is forward because I'm going to use the forward axis so I no want to go forward or backwards. And then plugs that into my world direction. Now how much I've moved my axis, so how much did I push forward or backwards on my joystick or my keyboard, determines the scale. The movement input can apply positive and negative scale for the direction. So in that case, that's why if we went up to our input, so let's go to project settings, let's go to our input, and we look at, for example, move forward, you'll notice move forward has W and S for the forward and backwards. I give it positive scale or forward on W, a negative scale or backwards on the S. That allows me to have one axis forward and backwards to go in two different directions because it applies a positive or negative scale to my world direction. One thing it recommends for your direction is to have it to be a normalized input. What that means is usually a zero to one or if we have a negative scale a negative one to zero. Now a forward vector node here or the right vector node gives us a scaled output. So for example, if I was to plug this into here and hit print, you'll notice our output is always going to be between 0 and 1 because the direction we're facing is going to be normalized against our scale value. And our scale value is going to be 0 or 1 when I use the keyboard or 0 and 1 in a graduating so like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, if I'm using a joystick and I slightly push it. So that's what allows you to do that slight movement with your animation on a joystick. It makes it really hard on a keyboard because you're either up or down. This will pass this over to our character movement and it will handle the movement and it'll apply it based on other settings we have set up. This is why one of the things it mentions in here is it only applies movement automatically to things such as a character or default pawn, something that subclasses pawn automatically because those are going to have character movement. If we have a normal pawn, for example, so let's say I have this pawn right here and we use add movement input, it's going to do nothing. Nothing's going to happen no matter what settings we use because we have no character movement to apply it to. You'd have to actually manually handle it. It handles these things behind the scenes. You could get the actual value then in the tick you could apply it. For our example here we don't really want to go into that in detail because for the most part if you add movement input you're going to do it inside of a character or something that can move. Our last option here is force. What this does is it forces it to move. Let's say you have a character who's moving around maybe during a scene you want them to move in a specific way or maybe they are thrown into a wall somehow and you're doing wall detection or collision detection and you need to move them out. But during that time you want the character themselves, the player, not to control themselves. You are forcing a movement and the controller has no more input. Well generally you would use something like one of these nodes. You ignore move input. So I set it to ignore move input, I can't move. And you can also check it with these variables. So let's go ahead and hook this up. What I'm going to do is Here's my reset VR node. I'm just simply going to hijack it. So when I hit R button, it'll tell me I can no longer move. And you'll notice down here, these are both unchecked. We're going to go ahead and hit play. And I can move around normally. I'll hit R. 
Now my arrow keys no longer work. All of my movement input is now being ignored. Let's check this on my forward axis only. We'll hit play. I can move around normally. I'll hit R. I can move forward and backwards normally, but left and right no longer works. So that's what the force does. It basically ignores movement input ignore. So if you tell it to ignore movement input, if this is on, for example, but you still need to allow your character to move or you're going to force it yourself, use the force checkbox. So that's what that does.